In this lecture, we will discuss, what is gratitude? How can gratitude help? How gratitude motivates, effect of gratitude on health, gratitude in the workplace, building a culture of gratitude, four A's of gratitude, saying thank you for the ordinary, real-life example of showing gratitude and its benefits. Good morning students, in this lecture, we will discuss what is gratitude? It's a recognition that there's goodness in our lives, gifts or benefits that we enjoy, and might often take for granted. This goodness is often due to the actions of another person. When we're grateful, we recognize the intention and effort that went into those actions on our behalf, and the benefits they gave us. Let's understand, how can gratitude help us? Over the past two decades, studies have consistently identified the strong benefits of gratitude for our minds, bodies, and relationships. Gratefulness increases happiness and life satisfaction. Grateful people are more resilient to stress. Grateful people get along better with others. Grateful people are less depressed. Grateful people achieve more. Grateful people are more helpful and generous. Now let's see how gratitude motivates us. Gratitude motivates people to make positive changes in their lives and in the world around them through feelings of connectedness. Gratitude rewards us with a strong network of support and encouragement, leading us to feel that we are capable of tackling big challenges. Elevation. Gratitude helps us feel inspired and uplifted, motivating us to become healthier and more generous people and better and more productive workers. Humility. Expressing gratitude forces us to recognize that our successes are due, at least in part, to the actions of others. Indebtedness, gratitude encourages us to recognize and reciprocate the good that others have given us, thus ridding ourselves of psychological debts we carry. Research shows that adopting an attitude of gratitude, simply expressing appreciation and being more thankful, can measurably improve your overall well-being. For example, studies prove that gratitude can increase happiness, reduce depression, and strengthen resiliency. Grateful people often experience reduced blood pressure, less chronic pain, increased energy, even longer lives. People who purposefully express more gratitude report higher self-esteem than those who don't, and they're more likely to help others, a pro-social behavior also linked to greater happiness. People who capture grateful thoughts before bed sleep better than those who don't. Why so many positive changes? Because gratitude actually rewires our brains, kickstarting the production of dopamine and serotonin. Like antidepressants, these feel-good neurotransmitters activate the bliss center of the brain, creating feelings of happiness and contentment. This appears to be self-perpetuating. Research suggests that with regular practice, you'll train your prefrontal cortex to better appreciate and retain positive experiences and thoughts, and to deflect the negative ones. Here are a few simple ways to deliberately cultivate that attitude of gratitude. Celebrate minor accomplishments. Think about what you have, rather than dwelling on what you don't. Tell the people in your life something you appreciate about them. Tell yourself too. Volunteer, hold a door for a stranger, or simply smile more and you'll probably feel better, as kindness and giving are connected to gratitude. Similar positive brain changes can occur from regular meditation and mindfulness. Keep a daily gratitude journal using an old-fashioned notebook or a high-tech app. Now let's summarize the effects of gratitude on health. It helps to improve sleep, the tendency to exercise, cardiovascular health, adherence to medication, mood, optimism, hope. At the same time, it also reduces substance abuse, fat intake, cortisol, blood pressure, suicidal thoughts, inflammation, perceived stress and depression in students. Let's see how gratitude affects a workplace. Surveys have found that, 
people are less likely to express thanks at work than any place else, 60% never or very rarely thanked anyone at work, only 10% expressed gratitude at work on a given day, 35% worried that expressing gratitude would lead coworkers to take advantage of them. Yet surveys also show that, saying thanks at work makes people feel happier and hearing thanks made them happier and more productive, by 50%, only 18% felt expressing gratitude made bosses seem weak, 93% said grateful bosses were more likely to succeed, in general, thank you from a supervisor boosts self-worth and self-efficacy, gratitude recipients become more trusting and more helpful, according to the US Department of Labor, the number one reason why people leave their jobs is because they don't feel appreciated. Hardwiring gratitude. Efforts to foster gratitude are most effective when they are baked into organizational culture, supporting individual practice while working towards systemic change. Voluntary participation. Expressions of gratitude and gratitude programs as a whole should not be forced on employees. Rather, gratitude needs to be fostered in a way that respects staff time. Maintaining authenticity. Gratitude should be a practice that is encouraged and allowed to grow organically. Making gratitude a year-round activity. Gratitude will thrive when it's not just done as part of discrete programs or at certain times of the year but is connected to other, year-round efforts to foster a positive, caring culture. Building a Resilience Toolkit Mindfulness techniques, training caregivers in the art of compassion, and engaging in campaigns to encourage kindness are all practices that, together with gratitude, offer an array of tools that staff can use. Happiness There's a natural tendency in this world, especially if you grew up in an environment where people complain a lot, to think, adults complain a lot. It's amazing how many conversations then become pity parties where people talk about what they like to call ain't it awful. Ain't it awful I got stuck in traffic. Ain't it awful my kid didn't get good grades. Ain't it awful I didn't get that job promotion. Ain't it awful this and ain't it awful that. The most common phenomena in modern psychology. So instead of thinking this way, think about the things for which you are truly grateful. Think about every little thing you have in your life that you are blessed to have. Think about the fact that you woke up this morning. That's good, a lot of people didn't. Think about the fact that you have a roof over your head. There's a billion people that don't. Think about the fact that you have a future set before you. Think about all the opportunities that await you in this lifetime, which are virtually unlimited. No matter what your current position is in life, there are always good things if you look deep enough. Even thinking about something as small as the breakfast you ate this morning, or of a friend that you're looking forward to seeing, can have an enormous impact on how you feel on a minute-to-minute, day-to-day basis. Then, no matter what your current position is in life, if you think positive thoughts, it's going to get better. Even in the midst of the greatest difficulties you will experience in life, you can always find things for which you are truly grateful. One of the most important things that you can do in life is to take a piece of paper and write down all the things for which you are truly grateful. And by the way, you're going to need more than one piece of paper. If you take the time to write these things down on paper, you'll be amazed at what you come up with. I always like to tell people to develop the habit of practicing the four A's. The first A stands for appreciation. Take every opportunity each day to thank every person for everything that he or she does, small or large, in the process of carrying out their duties in your home or at your work. Every time you develop an attitude of gratitude and just say thank you to a person, three wonderful things happen. First, their self-esteem goes up. They feel better and more valuable. They even feel more motivated to 
do more of the things for which they received appreciation in the first place. One of the best people building, child building, marriage relationship building tools of all is just to say thank you all the time. Now the second A stands for approval. Give praise and approval on every occasion for every accomplishment of whatever size. Give praise for every good effort. Give praise for every good suggestion or idea. Just say, that's good. Especially praise people when they do something that goes above and beyond the call of duty. Praise immediately. Praise specifically. Praise regularly. Whenever you praise people, they experience it actually physically and emotionally. Their self-esteem goes up and they feel happy inside. They like themselves and feel more valuable. And whatever you praise gets repeated. In fact, the definition of self-esteem is the degree to which a person feels himself or herself to be praiseworthy. The third A stands for admiration. Continually compliment people on their traits, such as punctuality and persistence. Compliment people on their accomplishments, both at work and in their private lives. Every time you admire something about another person, you raise that person's self-esteem and make them feel happier. The fourth and final A stands for attention. This simply means that you listen patiently, listen quietly, listen calmly, listen thoughtfully, and listen without interrupting. True listeners hear what's being said to them. By expressing your gratitude to others in this way, you unwittingly increase your own happiness. The habit of feeling and expressing gratitude to those around you and to life in general has a wonderful effect on your personality and overall life circumstances. Remember, you become what you think about most of the time. An attitude of gratitude Say thank you for grace, thank you for mercy, thank you for understanding, thank you for wisdom, thank you for parents, thank you for love, thank you for kindness, thank you for humility, thank you for peace, thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. That's how I live my life, that's where I, why I am, one of the reasons why I am today. Say thank you in advance for what is already yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for every moment that led to this day. Thank you for the hard times. They made me appreciate the good times. Thank you for the lessons. They were needed for my development. Thank you for my eyes that get to witness the miracles of today and tomorrow. Thank you for everything I take for granted. Thank you for all of my blessings. Thank you for my drive. Thank you for my spirit. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for giving me the courage to fight through the hard times. Thank you for the people in my life, those I love and those I learn from. Thank you for it all. Thank you. Thank you. It's the key that opens the door to instant happiness. Unlocks the door to everything we are really seeking in life. Happiness and contentment. Think about it. No matter what you say you want, money, riches, health, to help others, why do you really want it? When you drill deep down, the only reason anyone wants anything is the feeling we believe we will get from having it. That all boils down to happiness and contentment. And the truth is, we can have it now if we are grateful. And if you get quiet, get away from the noise of the world, and think for a moment about what you could be grateful for, I'm sure you could find plenty. Be grateful there's food on the table, air in your lungs, life in your body. Get grateful that you have opportunity opportunity to take your life to a whole nother level to decide right now that you are going to live your dreams and never settle until you do 
Get grateful for the mental strength you've been given to survive the hard times. Get grateful for your limbs if you have them. Many are not so blessed. Your eyesight if you have it. Many are not so blessed. Your hearing if you have it. Many are not so blessed. The health you do have. Many are in worse positions. Get grateful for that one person that has had an impact in your life or many people if you are so blessed. Then get grateful you can choose to be that person for someone else. That one that makes a difference in someone else's life, no matter how small. Get grateful you get to experience this magical universe. Today, look for miracles. I guarantee if you are looking, you will see them. There are unlimited things to be grateful for. Open your eyes. Unlock your amazing life. It's ready for you right now. Thank you for this day. Whatever it brings, whether a challenge I need to grow, a lineup to teach me patience, an unexpected blessing, every moment of joy, whatever today brings, thank you. Whatever it brings, I pray I have enough presence in each moment to know that no circumstance is my life. No high or low, no event, no thing is my life. Life is energy, and I know I'm so much more than my physical body. Thank you for my ability to love, to give to others my authentic love and kindness without expecting anything in return. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for my presence. Thank you for my ability to attract only the things and people that are in harmony with what I need in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this day, whatever it brings. Now let's see a real life example of showing gratitude. Amin Taufani become famous after his gratitude performance. Amin Taufani is currently the Director of Strategy at Singularity University Palo Alto, CA, United States. Taufani attended the University of British Columbia for his bachelor's degree and graduated with a degree in Cognitive Systems, Computational Intelligence and Design in 2005. He earned his MBA in Entrepreneurship and Finance from Stanford University as well as an MPA in Economic Policy and International Development, both in 2013. With an instrumental priest called Gratitude, please welcome Amen Tufani. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have uh, composed a song for you. Can't hear me? Can you hear me now? I have composed a song for you. It chronicles my journey at Harvard so far. It captures the highs and the lows, the yeses and the noes, and the friendships that I know will outlast our fame. <laughs> I decided to call the song Gratitude, for the gratitude that I felt for being here. Uh, the Kennedy School, and the people in it have surpassed my expectations for caliber and authenticity. So tonight, I hope to reciprocate. <laughs> 